I'm right here with Mellow Man Ace, legendary hip hop artist. What's up, man? Chilling, chilling, man. Out here on the Ave on a nice, beautiful Saturday. Yes, you know, sir. Cypress Hill, Cypress Ave. This is it, man. This is where it all started. This is where it all started at. So right I kind of, I kind of want to go way, way, way back before we, we even jump into the hip hop shit. Um, I know you left at an early age, but what uh, what did your parents or your, your relatives tell you about what it was like growing up in Cuba? Así entiende nuestro pueblo sus deberes, porque entiende que el enemigo es uno, el mismo que nos ataca a nosotros. Oh man, yeah, we left in 1971. And, you know, the stories we heard here were, you know, food rationing lines. The law establishing the ration, known as the Libreta, was passed in 1962, with hundreds of ration stores finally opening on July 12, 1963. You, had, you, you got like 20 pounds of rice for the month for your whole family. But you had to go stand in a long line, you know what I mean, to get that. You had 20 pounds of rice, 20 pounds of coffee, 20 pounds of, uh, I think, beans and sugar. Uh, and that was kind of all it was. And then if your uncles or your pops found, you know, they got a pig somewhere, then that day you, you had some meat. You know, they put the, the, the whole pig up, slowly cook it. You know, it take a long time to cook a pig. Shit was crazy, man. Um, yeah. Very humble, very humble be beginnings, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, living under communism and shit like that, it's never easy. You know, I remember seeing Soviet tanks on my block as a young man. Uh, it's, 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 it's sad. At that time, it was really sad. You didn't really know what it was when you were four or five years old, but, you know come to the United States and the worst you see is, is like a police car on your street. In less than 90 days, between April and June of 1980, more than 110,000 Cubans flee Cuba. What was it like uh, growing up in LA being Cuban? Did you get a lot of shit from, you know, the Mexicans, El Salvadorians? At that time, um, it was a, a big Cuban um, community, Southgate, Bell, mm -hmm. even in the Huntington Park. Okay. And um, and even up in parts of Cudahy, you know, it was a big Cuban community. And so we, we had our pocket of, of Cuban things to do. However, you know, we did get um, static. You know, we, we had to box a lot, you know, predominantly with the Mexican cats and, and some of the brothers too, because the Mexicans didn't understand how we could be black and, and speak perfect Spanish. And the brothers hated the fact we spoke Spanish but was black. So <laughs> we didn't know English at that time. You know, I was just a young cat trying to figure it out, talking like a very broken Sammy Sosa type of English, you know, like baseball's been very, very good to me type shit, you know. Uh, shit like that, man. Uh, it was it was arguments over dumb shit, you know what I mean? Like cultural differences and things like that that nowadays we look at in our older age and, and we're looking back and we go like wow how ignorant was society back then did you uh fall in love with hip-hop and who were some of the influences that got you into this art i gotta say well you know i heard i heard rappers delight come out in real time in 1979 that record was all over the radio but i wasn't really infected with the virus of it yet you know um i would have to say it was like uh 1982 in there when I heard and, and, and listen we, we were playing we knew a guy who was a DJ he had a he had turntables in the back of his like um, hairdresser place he had a, his parents owned like a hairdresser and he had turntables in the back of the, of the thing down on Tweety Boulevard and he showed us all these records from Sugar Hill Records at that time like the sequence and shit like that um, funk you right on up records like that um, and then also um, I heard a, a group at that time this was like 81 in there I heard a group by the name of the Mean Machine they was also on on Sugar Hill 
um, he had all the Sugar Hill records, so he played this one record called The Meme Machine, and the song was called The Disco Dream. I, that song really stuck with me, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, so like 1982, 83, we saw a movie called Wild Style. That's when I started to start writing rhymes in high school, 11th grade in there, 10th grade, 11th grade. And, you know, ever since I had heard that, uh, that Mean Machine record, I, because the, there was an MC who broke off into a small Spanish rap in there. Mm. And I said to myself, I want to be like that dude. Were there a lot of Latino rappers? Do you remember, you know, some of the ones coming up back then? There, nah. there were no Latino rappers except for the part that, like I said, I mm -hmm. heard this one cat, Mr. Schick, of the Mean Machine. And I would have to go and, and research that and find that, find his name out who he was in order to, you know, really get him fully engulfed in, 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 into the, like, the whole Latino aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And then I came to find out that there was Puerto Rican cats, you know, that they weren't necessarily yelling that they were Puerto Rican on the records, but they were there at Hip Hop's inception. You know, people like Prince Whipple Whip, my man DJ Disco Wiz, Charlie Chase, people like that, you know, um, that influence early hip hop culture, you know. Um, so, but again, there was nobody really rhyming that I heard on Wax, except Mr. Schick. And, and that's what really guided me to want to be rhyming in all Spanish. And then later on, I would I would add on to that by creating the bilingual rhyme style that I created. And on the line, we have ALT. What up, ALT? ALT, man. What you doing on the boulevard, loco? You were signed to Ruthless Records. How the hell did that happen? And he said, um, how do you feel about ghostwriting? You mentioned Kid Frost battled Ice T. You, were you there? Yeah, I've seen many of them. Because uh, this is for the last Did you ever find it hard uh, being in a predominantly African American music genre, being a Latino? What do you remember about Lighter Shade of Brown? Did you ever uh, make music or deal with Brownside? Toker was cool people. He had some beef with, with Frost, but um, but not with us. Take me back, man. 80s, 90s, we're talking. Um, what was L.A. like specifically, you know, your environment like growing up? So I was a DJ, rapper, uh, San Gabriel Valley. We did all the flyer parties. Uh, I threw a party with uh, with Tony G from uh, Crazy Crew, and uh, that was the infamous Tony G K D A Y Mixmaster. Yep, and that's how I got to know Tony. But I was just, you know, I was just a kid. I was about, I think I was about 15 years old, maybe. Well, when I threw the party with him, I was about 16 years old, and um, we started making demos and. Um, you know, we were, we were, we were like party ba battle, battle MCs. We go battle everybody around, the, you know, around the, uh, San Gabriel Valley and no go shit. watch Kid Frost rap and go watch him battle Ice T and go down to the Casa Camino Real and watch, you know, get in, uh, with fake IDs and watch Tony G battle and DJ and nice. around, around Monte, we had, uh, parties on Cherry Lee and crazy crew parties we'd go and watch tony tony dj and kid frost rap and sometimes we'd get to rap and you know we just did it like that until i got a demo together and tony started having a little success and you know um well, he was producing uh the booyah tribe and he produced yeah. uh a cat by the name of mellow man ace and yes, mas Bingon came out and when I heard Moss being going, I was like, damn, that record's the shit, right? So let's try and get back in touch with with uh with Tony G. You know, that's that cat, that's we threw parties with him, you know, we know him. So he had a record store right there on uh Peck and Lower Azusa. Okay. And um it was a it, it was a record store slash he rented DJ equipment and stuff. And I remember I went down and um um his cousin Juan was working it. And Tony was DJing for um What's his name? Bust the move. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Young MC. Young MC. Uh -huh. He was DJ for Young MC. He was on tour. I took my demo tape down to Tony, and I was, I was like, to the record shop, and I was like, Yo, what's up? Where's Tony? He said, he ain't here. He's on tour. 
I said, well, here, I have a demo tape I wanted to hear. Tell him, remember, ALT, I'm the, I, I, I threw a party with him back in the days. He said, all right, I'll tell him about you. I came back every week. No, nah, he's still on tour. No, nope, he's still on tour. Finally, I don't know how long went by, but mo like probably a couple months. I walked in and, he, and they had to be like, damn, this kid is just like a pain in my ass. <laughs> and he said, he's here. He heard your demo tape and he told me to tell you if you were to come on in to get your phone number. So I did. And Tony called me and said, come on down to the record shop. And I did. And he said, so what do you want to do? He said, shit, I want to make a record. I want to make an album. He said, well, be in my house tomorrow at, at the house on Cogswell, which turned out to be the infamous uh, 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 Hiddelick Studios. Okay. I mean, Hiddelick Studios. I mean, uh, uh, G-Spot Studios. Hiddelic, okay. that's, that's later in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, Cogswell and um, everybody ended up recording there um, throughout the years. But I went, I showed up and... I started reading my rap that I had wrote and he gave me a beat and I started re re reading reading off the paper and he said stop stop he said go home and memorize your shit and you come back when you got that shit memorized we ain't doing nothing nice. yet I said all right so I did I came back we made a we made a demo tape made like three songs and then he said um how do you feel about ghostwriting I said I have no problem with it why what's up and he said um well, I got a project. Someone just got signed to him, to Virgin Records, and he's a lat Latino artist like yourself. And um, and um, I want to I want to get you involved on his project. And it's Kid Frost. I go, Kid Frost, Kid Frost. He said, Yeah. I said, Fuck, I was a fan. <laughs> so I was like down for that. So we met up. Um, we met up down at Wildcat Studios, and I came up with the concept Hispanic Causing Panic, which ended up being the album name, That's and wrote the song was. that night for him. And then history, that was it. That was it. I became Kid Frost Ghostwriter for about the next four albums.